Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is MJ, and I am joined by a new face to the Valorant scene here in CCL, but not quite to CCL entirely. Colin, please introduce yourself. Hey guys, I'm Colin. Um, I stream a lot of the Rocket League games. Of course, um, I'm new to the Valorant scene, but you know, I'm super excited to kind of kick, uh, kick CCL off with Valorant here. And you know, I just want to talk about, Mitch, how cold it's been the past couple of days here. You know, this morning it was negative 21 degrees. I, that's what you get for living in South Dakota, Colin. <laughs> was, I, can't, I don't really crazy. have much to tell I, you. It, it, it burns almost. You know? <laughs> so cold it burns. But no, we are back for uh, to kick off another great season here for CCL Valorant here on Trojans Esports Twitch channel at Dakota State University. Uh, I'm really excited for this first match, really getting back into the swing of CCL. I know I was looking forward to it. Basically, all Christmas break, um, and I know our varsity team has definitely been looking into it as well. We start this season with a match against University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Um, we played against them a couple times last semester, uh, at least once during the actual season. I don't think we actually met them at all during the playoffs because they ended up playing against uh, SDSU to make it to the LAN. Uh, which actually turned into kind of a big upset because they came in as sixth seed and SDSU was third, and Wisconsin actually ended up coming in and beating uh, SDSU to make it to that land tournament last semester. They ended up finishing fourth last year. They did. Um, Playoffs were very crazy, to be honest. It was a lot of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, I, I can't remember exactly who they fell to. I th want to say it was USD, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I do know that last last year, DSU versus DSU was the, was the final tournament uh, <laughs> finisher with uh, Dickinson State versus Dakota State finishing it up. And unfortunately, our home team of DSU, uh, Dakota State, ended up falling a little bit short um, to Dickinson. But, I mean, it was a heater of a match pretty much all the way through. Unfortunate for our bind last semester, if you remember. <laughs> season it was it was very heartbreaking to see to be honest but i mean that's just that's just how it goes sometimes especially when you had such a dominant season like we had last year oh, of yeah. uh completely undefeated in the normal season and then we come back into the playoffs win our playoff game win all the way to the finals and just fall a little bit short it's a heck of a run and definitely you're 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 getting attention and people are going to practice for you when you have seasons like that oh so. yeah and especially we you know when you're undefeated in that in this kind of league people are going to watch you and see how you play and they're going to learn from you and so when they, when other teams they go to watch this stream, you know they'll learn and take notes from this stream today, and they're gonna say, okay, how can we counter what this guy does? How can we counter, you know, these these Silva lineups, things of that nature. When you're at the top, everyone's looking up at you. So, <laughs> yeah. but we, I'm hoping for another great season to kind of kind of do a, again what we did last last year of another another undefeated run, and I I'm hoping that we get off to a good start against Wisconsin Lacrosse, although they've apparently been putting in some good homework over the break um especially for us um <laughs> is, is what i've kind of heard but uh otherwise for dsu it's the same roster as last semester we got frog jamula billy zeon and lunchbox and i actually think that unless i am like completely brain farting here and forgetting some of the names i think we do have a new player for uwl um because we still have legit stratus fruit snacks and Simba, but I believe Torin might be new. I could be wrong there. Don't take my word for it, but uh, I, it, I'm definitely not quite recognizing that name. So maybe a bit of a of a lineup change, and they'll they'll come in swinging real hard. Yeah, and I don't want to toot anyone's uh, you know toot anyone's horn here, but I heard that Billy over winter break actually hit Radiant 120. 120? 120? He made it up to 120? 120. I heard I heard about it when he was in the 400s, but 120. I believe so. I saw a Twitter post. I believe. I mean, the, the dude is cracked and definitely it's, is a carry oh. here at DSU, but 120, that is impressive. It's, for, a, it's a very good feat, especially for a college student. For those of you at home who may not be entirely uh, familiar with uh, how the ladder works, by saying Radiant 120, we mean that Billy was able to climb his way up all the way to the 120th best player in North America. And we have him sitting on the DSU varsity <laughs> team. So it's, it's definitely pay attention to It's Billy. He's he's a fragger at heart, but he's also amazing at this game in every sense. But no, we'll be throwing into our first map here of Split. It's back in rotation, Colin. Yeah, so. I'm, uh, I'm super excited. There's a lot of nostalgic bits in Split. Um, I'm super excited to see this map played at such a high caliber, to be honest, and see what I can learn personally from this map, being on blue team. And uh, it's just, it's just, Makes me grin ear to ear, to be honest. 
But uh, no, the, some of the some of the changes that we have seen, even though rosters have kind of stayed the same, there's been a lot of changes in Valorant themselves, uh, in and of itself, um, since last semester. Specifically, some of the maps that have been split up. Split is back. We have a new map um, called Lotus, who I'm currently checking has been banned, Choose your so we agent. won't be seeing Lotus, oh, unfortunately. No. Uh, you can blame uh, Wisconsin for that one. They ah, banned Lotus. All um, right. Um, but then uh, the two maps that are then replaced or swapped out are Breeze, so we can say goodbye to Breeze. And also, DSU got inadvertently nerfed because Riot took out Bind. Which just so happened to be our best map. <laughs> we, we literally only lost Bind to Dickinson in the finals. <laughs> and admittedly, it was a very bad oh. loss, but... It, it was it was still when you have that kind of record on it you don't want to lose that yeah, it, especially to the you know the creators of the game but I mean a pretty pretty good lineup of agents so far here for split I personally really love the uh, Viper pick on the defense or just on split in general but we will be seeing a double con uh, controller lineup. Um, from DSU side, we have Astra and Viper teaming up only against the one controller of uh, Omen on the side of EWL. They have, they're opting for a more defensive heavy double sentinel lineup. Yeah, playing so, double smokes on this map, I've noticed just from my own experience playing this, um, you know, since it's been out at least, um, that double smokes is actually very, very effective in, in this map um, in terms of rotations. You know, you gain mid control and it becomes a very, you know, very intense for the defenders. And so just, just to get it on the record, we are starting here on split. Next, we will be seeing Haven. And if we ended up going to a third map, which would be fantastic to kick off the season with, we will be going to Icebox. So it'll be split, Haven, Icebox. Okay. Some early aggression towards A site. Blocking All vision. five players stacked Blame up from UWL. <laughs> And they execute onto site. Jay Mula is the only one really on site to deal with this. So far, bullets are flying, but no one falls legit with first blood, though. Finally taking down the defender of Jay Mula, and they get the spike, spike down. Planted. With pretty much everyone else unscathed. I believe their raise was healed up by their sage. Cypher is a little SOL as we wait for that cooldown to go back down. But DSU getting ready for this retake. They got the turret up in heaven. Making sure nobody peeks out too hard as the players of DSU kick from the sides. Frogfan with the opening kill onto Sing. That's how I'm gonna pronounce that. <laughs> Legit oh, free snacks also oh, fall. Stratus wow. is good for one, but Frogfan and Zeon are gonna swing back in, taking down their alternate of Mr. Ranch Potato. I'm just gonna say potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DSU did with a really, really good um, take back there. That was awesome to see. You know, we saw Billy on the backside on screens there, and uh, Zeon. They were they were all just kind of tight in the elbow area. So that was a really good retake for them. I've been lied to. I even checked the roster listings right before coming in here, and I was supposed to be Simba. <laughs> oh well. But a great round for both teams actually being able to execute onto a site that quickly on split like this is kind of impressive Here. dsu didn't really offer too much of a resistance but they choosing more to take that retake position uh, and now from that they're able to buy into this with specters i saw a marshall earlier uh, but they, they're able to get the first round here for this best of three see on here kind of util dumping in the mid making them fight for it a little bit more here and it looks like they might kind of give that up. As the Viper wall drops. They, the, the benefit, though, is that DSU has the two smoking agents, so... There goes the Astra Vortex. Looks like their rays made it all the way down into vents. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, legit with the shorty kill onto Frog He's gonna net himself a Bulldog. That's a amazing upgrade, honestly. <laughs> Switching out the uh, double barrel shotgun for the uh, not the best, but definitely not the worst um, weapon in the game. Lunch I think, I think here. statistically the worst oh, rifle. Looks like DSU is going to have to fight for B site here as we yeah, it's definitely get down to have, the last 30 seconds. It's definitely going to have to be a, a B left. execute as they don't really have time to rotate all the way through their spawn. Here comes the execute as well. Oh, Billy is going to be mollying the default plant as Fruit Snacks and Lunchbox are going to be trading back and forth. Billy and uh, Potato as well. 
It's down to a two versus three in favor of Wisconsin lacrosse, because Zeon's going to even it up. Mr. Potato is going to be getting the spike plant down just in the nick of time, but Jay Mula is here with Zeon, and they're going to clean up the rest of Wisconsin. Yeah, really, again, a well-done retake there for DSU. You know, we saw that a lot of, like, UWL, they weren't exactly playing together on their swings, and, you know, they were kind of almost swinging one by one, and then allowed DSU to pick them off. So you got you got to be able to swing and fight together there. It's a little bit difficult to entirely communicate that with your team, but one thing that is on the benefit for Wisconsin lacrosse is they were still able to take down three of the players for DSU. And so if they want to be able to buy into this next round and they want to take maybe bonus, they're not going to be able to hold on to so many Spectres, Bulldogs, and Marshals as they would have if they would have lived. Exactly. They are still going to be bringing in a Bulldog and a Spectre, but mostly it's going to be uh, okay. Frenzies and a Marshal bought into this. Yeah, being able to take down at least two defenders on the second round is actually super huge for the attack in terms of eco. But this is where we're going to be seeing, hopefully, Wisconsin Lacrosse going to be coming back into this. They do have the weaponry advantage. They do also have the numbers as they do finish out the first kill pretty much unscathed as well as the Rays. It doesn't look like they have any health missing. But th this is where... This is where not only Wisconsin Lacrosse has to get a good round because they have that weaponry advantage, but for every gun that they lose, it is it is nearly 4,000 4, credits in the hole. Now, they do have the uh, numbers advantage. They are up two players, and they have spiked down. They're in excellent positions, too. Billy caught completely off guard as legit pushes all the way up into heaven with Stratus to finally take down the three remaining players of DSU. Yeah, it seems legit just took some screen control and was able to push up into heaven there and just caught them off guard. So I liked the play of putting the two players up in heaven, but someone's got to be watching screens at least. They can't just let it go like that especially when you uh, have this these aggressive plays that we've been seeing from Wisconsin. But again, that's the round that you're expecting to win. DSU now able to come back and buy into this. They're choosing two Phantoms, three Vandals, although Jay Mula not able to fully buy heavy shields. He's probably choosing to stick with some utility, especially on the Initiator of Sky. Uh, probably definitely needing that heal and more than likely choosing the Trailblazer over over anything else. The fate of UWL is oh, going to be really good taken there. down. First by the spam from Xeon, and then finally sat down by the nade. And that was just great crosshair placement from Xeon, kind of just spamming in the middle of that ramp area there, was able to take him, the fade down to like basically one HP. And if you were anywhere close to that nade, you were finally going to be put away. And now DSU has stalled out the push completely in mid. Legit still pushing up. They are gonna smoke it off, but now the Viper. Like they they've, might they, be trying to leave, though. They've taken so much time that Billy's able to put the Viper wall back up. He's gonna be running out of fuel for a minute, but they don't really have a whole lot to execute onto this site. Really, they just oh, have to I push know, through it, but the Dratus. Lunchbox. Eating the molly and pushing all the way through. Lunchbox is caught in a very tough position as Stratus Ooh. is going to be hitting another headshot. Spike planted. DSU trying to take a little bit more heaven control here as they retake for this site. And now, Wisconsin's going to be having the numbers advantage in this post plant. They're in really good actual positional spot, like positions. With this nasty crossfire, and by planting in default, they have some good lineups here. But Frog is just gonna be taking down legit. It's still up one for WL. Zion's gonna get it half before Potato's gonna finally take him off, but Potato's gonna win the aim duel against Frog. And that'll be two rounds now in a row for Wisconsin Lacrosse. Putting DSU onto another save round as well. What a great round for UW UWL, to be honest. Like, I never realized to be like, that is such a great crossfire, being able to set up the sage wall there and just play at the very back site.
and just wait for them to tip, tap the bomb, and then both of you guys can swing. Of course, legit, he swung a little bit early and he got picked off, but they were able to have the numbers and they were able to uh, secure the round for them, so. And even you know, whether you had someone on the pillar, you also have someone all the way back in the garage area. You have it even even further control and as well watching your flank. But now DSU is put onto this save round. You're expecting an, a, a two to three here in favor of UWL, but Billy's going to be taking out a ton of utility. He's going to live just barely as he's going to molly out the raise player. Almost all utility from Billy is going to be used up. Just trying to stall out this spot, but legit's gonna be pushing through the smoke and finally taking out Billy after forcing out all of that utility. That is nearly, I think, 600 credits down the drain. Not really netting them a whole lot either. Zeon's gonna be here on the flank, though, in heaven. Now Wisconsin Lacrosse have firm control of sight and finally getting the plant down. Spike planted. Tato's gonna be opening it up and it's just back and forth between Sing and Zeon. The weapon advantage in favor of Wisconsin, but there's not a whole lot Frog can do aside from hitting a nasty headshot. The one dig from downtown. He's not gonna get caught out. He's just looking for exit frags at this point as any, any gun taken out of WL's hands is essentially 3,000 credits won by them yeah, dying to spike here. Around here. It's important to try to get exits and you know really try to strike their eco a little bit more here just to um, secure a little bit more um, positional advantage in later rounds. But now we see DSU coming back in with a good buy. Even with all their losses, Wisconsin's going to have another buy as well. I mean, after you're winning now three rounds in a row, you're expecting a pretty good economy. I'd like to see maybe Stratus buying fruit snacks here instead of um, having fruit snacks by, the, by their own so that you don't cap out on credits. Um, however, probably saving for like an operator right, or something. Exactly what I was just about to say. He could be saving for an op next Although, round too, which is a potential. Who's their op agent? Really, it's only the raise that I'm seeing. Most of the time when you have, when you're considering running an operator like that, you're looking for either the nerfed chamber or even a jet due to their ability to Someone escape to easier. To have, like, almost a second light, yeah. Zeon, he's pulling out the Odin this round, which I love to see, but he is gonna be pushed by his raise counterpart of legit. Just back and forth. He's gonna get the kill too. Oh. Legit falling straight into the crosshairs of an Odin. Zeon though, gonna be choosing to switch to the Vandal. Seems that UWL here is kind of switching off sides here and giving up some mid, mid control, but looks like they might be pushing towards A side on here. And DSU has to know this, especially with Lunchbox pushing all the way up into mid. There's not a whole, a whole, not a whole lot that UNL can be. Not very many places they can be, especially with the sky flash. They Just know that off angle from Spot frogs gonna net him eight. one still numbers are even left. zeon's gonna change that though as he's taken down to 17 hp there still is a res in the back pocket for wisconsin so they're definitely not out of this yet however they're gonna have time to rotate though. they're definitely gonna have to commit to something here jay mula is gonna be good for one and i'm gonna be left. taking down zeon Looks like Omen here is going to save the next round. That's a smart choice. I mean, you probably could have died and still been able to buy and all that. However, that's giving the opponent an alt orb and all that. Exactly. And so choosing to stay and keep that Vandal in, mostly due actually to you having such a good bankroll. You're not worried about not having all of the credits that you would get from, lo from losing and still dying. Because something about the economy in Valorant is that when you die and lose the round, you get more money than if you live all the way through and you take a gun into the next round. And speaking of ults, like you mentioned, I'm actually really curious to see how they play their ults, especially Lunchbox and Billy here. I know that you play a lot of Viper yourself, and so I'm curious to see how Billy plays his ult here. Something I love doing here on Split, especially as Viper, is...
putting that ultimate down in mid and then going and standing up on that little lip by the box because it's it's a weird off angle to be pushing into one the ultimate goes just a little bit further than that so as they're entering they're having the like edge of the smoke kind of vision because when you're in a smoke it's one thing but when you're on the edge of it you're completely blinded but they're just coming into that you can see them highlighted they take the 50 um damage for decay but also you're kind of up and to the right so the only thing that they can really see is your feet if that and then you're able to get uh, some pretty easy kills. It's kind of a one and done, so you have to kind of get a kill and then leave. But really going down here on B Heaven here, you think they might commit to that, but it looks like they're kind of backing off and going back into market. Well, I've what been talking just about rats. <laughs> <laughs> some action, actual action has been occurring in this game. Like I'm not Mooley here and then it up into heaven as. Lunchbox fights for his life, but he looks like he needs to pick on Cypher. <laughs> There's just KJ Util. First the alarm bot. I think it was shut down, but... Counter ult on... Legit's Kill gonna whiff the showstopper! Jay oh, is gonna clean it up with threes! <laughs> wow! My word, that went from like zero to a hundred and straight back to zero, <laughs> and then boom, three ults were, po were popped all at once. Yeah, just as I had mentioned ults, you know, I, I noticed that Fade had ulted and immediately Lunchbox popped his ult as a way to counter ult, and that is a super smart idea. Yeah, the, the KJ ult keeping everyone away, letting you get that DK kind of back up since you're you're deafened the fade ultimate i mean that thing hits hard you're basically very, everything you're there you're struggles. deafened you're decayed you have a tether now on you so they know exactly where you're at but the i i, I guess i never really clicked in my head at least to use the killjoy ultimate as a counter to that Looks especially like since i could run you down so easy here but. race is pushing up into b heaven a bit of a zeon whiff with the boom bot Definitely making sure nobody is taking ropes, but looks like they have three up on B Heaven, but it might be okay if you don't have any on site. A very wide swing from Billy. It's gonna net him one. However, being in such danger, the attack from Heaven has now come to bite in the in the butt. We see Astra flinging all the way into garage right now. Spike is still yet to go down as DSU prepares this pinchier maneuver. Looks like Omen is still expecting this and is going to get the kill onto Frog Fan. Spike planted. Two versus three. Jay Mula's good for one. Check in that corner just in case someone else might be standing there. They have to know that Omen is playing back Last towards Garage. I know exactly. Solid shoulder. Oh. And Song is just going to take down Jay Mula. Yeah, that Cypher will really force him to try to push something in, instead of kind of get crossfired there. And so, you know, you, try to, you wanted to isolate Omen to be able to take um, garage control and it just couldn't get it done. And now what I love that we're seeing is this back and forth between the, the teams. However, that ends up going in favor of Wisconsin because they had such a bankroll of cash from winning three rounds in a row. They can kind of afford to go these back and forths and still be able to buy. See, we see all five with rifles, only one bulldog and one with light armor, but it's a lot better than he has used by. I definitely agree. Yeah, winning three rounds in a row is super huge for them, to be honest. So this is where we see that Viper ultimate. They, one benefit that Wisconsin has is they definitely have the utility to, like, scope this out and definitely scout it out and uh, make sh like clear a lot of the angles that I would normally be holding due to having the two prowlers from Fade a boom bot from Ray's. And actually they have one of the best pieces of utility in my opinion to like countering a Viper ultimate. And that's an omen and their paranoia. Because oh, okay. Viper is still nearsighted when in the smoke. She just gets the highlight on their opponent. Now you add the paranoia on top of that, you see nothing. I mean, it is you are com nearly completely flashed at that point. And so being able to paranoia, especially if you know generally where the Viper's at, you're able to counter it really well. Legit is gonna be taking down the Xeon. As they get the spike down. That's one thing Wisconsin's been really good at is getting that spike down. Jamula's good for one, but these, these trades back and forth between 
Wisconsin players have actually been working really well. Wall up and make some space for himself. Song's gonna take down Frog Fan. It's just up to Billy. He's good for one. If anyone can do this, it will be Billy. Oh! And the tapping of the spike as legit is watching that angle. Unfortunate timings from Billy, but I mean, it was a it was a good effort and bringing the opposing team down to only uh, I think it was only two players left. Two players, yeah. Still a very good round for DSU as they take a lot of eco there, and we're gonna be taking a timeout break. It looks like. Yeah, Leif, calling that timeout, especially now that you're you're running into these rounds and the mentality rounds of, well, now we got to save, then we buy, save, buy, save, buy. I know at least for me, that starts hurting. Yeah, the, the save and buy kind of back and forth, it becomes a really big problem. It kind of almost messes with your mental a little bit because you can't buy the same gun every round, and you you it almost worries you a little bit that you have to buy you know a stinger or you know even a frenzy sometimes. Because then you'll run into the idea of like, well, maybe if we force up this round instead of full saving we could actually maybe get a little bit of ground but then when you you won't be able to buy next round and it's just a whole mess so really sitting back and resetting yourselves i think is a great call now i want to ask what exactly are you like seeing on split that is working kind of well for wisconsin lacrosse i mean dsu was the favorite team going into this but i mean Looks like they're doing pretty well they for themselves. Doing pretty well. And I think that a lot of that goes to them taking mid control. And, you know, we see a lot of the mid control. They're, they're, a lot of them are fighting for mid control. And that take that takes on really early on during the round. And then, you know, they, they can either decide to back off if they don't want that. Or they can push forward and go into B. Because going from mid to B is such an easy, easy rotate for them. I will say I'm noticing a heavier set towards B. Which I think is is pretty much just split in a nutshell. B is kind of the the easier one to get onto. It's the more fun site. <laughs> the more fun site. <laughs> However, we did see a lot of early aggression towards A in the in the whole game. But now DSU coming back into it. They have a buy, and they have the utility for this. We see another mid stack from Wisconsin. Potato's gonna be getting the first kill. And Zeon, he's gonna he, I think he was tethered by the, the the fade snare there. He was able to back out, but I mean DSU after losing one are gonna completely Dust give up B Heaven. Billy oh, though Billy's getting get super aggressive. Play. And we have both Billy and Lunchbox here watching the drop. Lunchbox. Billy and Stratus going back and forth, but legit has toppled Billy. Like that might hit him, it's no, it's not. It forced him out of position. Stratus having to move up closer, and Jamula hearing the footsteps. So Jamula's gonna ult here to one one some positions. Remaining. And Zeon's good for one. Legit oh, also no. falling. Jamula with the final kill. Let's say legit took down the the jellyfish there, the squids. But <laughs> jellyfish. That, I, you I'm cannot to... tell me that that they don't look like jellyfish going through. People have called them cabbages before, and I kind of see it, but they look like jellyfish. Have you not seen them move? They're cabbages. They're cabbages. They're okay, cabbages. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all animal bait. Ah, oh, whatever. You, 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 okay, I kind of see where you're coming from now. <laughs> they're all, they're all animal-based abilities. Bird, you can't dog. say I'm I, I guess I understand jellyfish maybe in that sense, but... <laughs> but no, DSU coming back into it. They still only had two players remaining. Jaymula and Zeon doing work this round, especially Jaymula being the one person on DSU's team with the double digits. Trying to catch up with legit a little bit. We do have a stinger, and now we're seeing some very fast aggression towards A again. And it seems this this seems to be the play. If you're going to B or and you go through mid and then you back out and you play it slow, A, they just explode onto there, following that raise as a spearhead. And Mr. Potato taking down Jay Mula. Frog fan's good for one, but Potato's good at another. Trades back and forth, but it's all in favor of Wisconsin as they are going to get the spike down. Three to two. DSU with some weapons advantage, but... Zian here is going to have to wait just a little bit for Billy to try to make a help, try to help him out. And there's one. Billy with only 85 HP. They do have their showstopper, but poor timing to pull out the abilities as Song is going to take down Billy with a long range stinger. It's all down to Zeon, and really, 
the Sage could res and really just close this round out. However, with the bomb oh. ticking down so fast, Song with another long range stinger kill is going to trade that out for a Phantom Last round for Vandal. The switch. Wow. That was a really, really great round economically for UWL, to be honest. I was actually just going to mention uh, before this last round that they were that DSU was actually gaining some ground, um, but now they're going to have to take a step back and kind of recoup here as um, UWL full buys. Yeah, they, they've been in a comfortable spot to buy this whole half. It is last round in the half, so the two ultimates from DSU and the one from Wisconsin are definitely going to have to be popped here or be wasted. We're going to see another B to mid stack from Wisconsin. And I'm loving what I'm seeing from oh, Billy. Nice. Getting aggressive. And Lunchbox also was there to kind of kind of follow up on it. And now the Viper smoke ultimate down mid. Looks like UWL is thinking about going towards garage here. Lunchbox is in this one and done corner. Yeah, he has a ton of utility stacked up in this chokehold too. So two of these chokeholds are really blocked up by the players of DSU. A is the most open and the most available. We've seen how Wisconsin likes to push this instead. Oh, and legit's gonna be executing it. Xeon. That's what I mean by they have the, the utility to really break into this. Billy's gonna whiff some shots that legit's gonna get the kill as the Viper ultimate falls. And with that, Jay Mula's gonna be rotating up into a heaven, really opening up that main area for Wisconsin to execute on. Unfortunate that the Sage Res was down is the one player actually who's dead from Wisconsin. Otherwise, you could have been seeing a three versus five here. Definitely still a winnable round here. Looks like UWL is going to be pushing towards A side here. Like, kind of have full control, um, but we still have an Astral, so it's definitely not losable. Not losable indeed. 12 seconds to go, and we will be seeing Spike the plant planted. down. Post plant situation, you see the Cypher move off site as the other three players are going to be playing more on the actual bomb itself. I think Frog still had all four of his stars. He hasn't used any of them yet. He's gonna get flashed up and use his Vortex and Concuss. So a lot of utility out from Frog. Jamul is not quite gonna take down Stratus and it's just down to Frog, but Song's gonna take him down. And that'll be a five, seven half in favor of Wisconsin lacrosse. Switching sides. Very tight half though, to be honest. Like, I mean, other than the three rounds that UWL won, it, I mean, it would have been a very, very tight game either way. If, if say, D, say DSU won the third round that UWL had won, it could have been a complete flop of rounds just based off of economic alone. And that's what that's what coming in from those, uh, those pistol rounds that DSU historically is not the best <laughs> at. DSU doesn't need to win pistol rounds, although here we did see them win both the pistol and the bonus. We'll see if they can do it again on the attack, but... You know, maybe I know Riot didn't change a whole lot with these with when Split came back. Um, there were a couple um, actual changes, especially on the A site. They changed how Heaven the the rafters were kind of working. Uh, oh, and they obliterate the Sage Wall. They're opening it up right away. But you know, I don't think enough has, on Split has changed to really change my mind on saying that it is still a defensive sided map more so than anything. But we'll see as DSU now takes the attack. They've already taken so much ground up mid. Sage is here using all of her utility to try to slow down this push. Legit also going to be pushing up. Xeon going to be getting the first kill. Although Legit with the backstab is going to be walking in, taking down Jay Mula, but going to fall. Now we see Looks Billy. Like they might give it up. Billy's all the way up in a heaven creating a ton of space for his team. They have not completely cleared out screens as Fruit Snacks is still here, but they went from mid to A through ropes. And now we see Frog getting the plant down, trying to get that Astro Wall up as soon as possible. However, I don't think we saw it at all the first half. So I don't entirely know why Frog's the one that's gonna be getting the plant when you have the KJ lockdown or even Billy's uh, Viper's Pit. The 
really getting some pop shots off. Gonna be taking down Stratus and gonna be swinging onto Song as Lunchbox now finishes it up. Taking down Fruit Snacks. That was a really, really well planned rotate for DSU there. They took a little bit of a, a B control and then they just left it. They, they, they made them think that they were gonna go B and then they went straight to A and that was perfect for them because they had an, an entirely free site, they had free A heaven, and it, they had a free plant basically. All they had to worry about was the fade on screens. So what that came down to was Billy able to just snake his way all the way up into A heaven, yes pun intended, but also the fact that you, you it's not uncommon to see the rays playing in uh, that vents area. And so by killing the rays because she pushed up and tried to fight you in mail, you now know there's likely nobody over in mail. So all of our vents, I should say, all events should be clear. Billy has heaven. And so the likelihood of anyone actually being on A is very low. And they just execute off of that pressure. But now we see Bomb hanging out towards the B site, sitting in garage as the rest of BSU, they've pushed up a lot, not quite gonna fall to the shorty of legit, but Potato's sitting here with another, cla with a classic, which I guess is like a half shotgun, but. <laughs> a very cheeky angle nonetheless. And there's just no pressure given from either side. Billy's wall's gonna go down which is gonna push oh, the fade off, and yeah. Potato's good for one. Chipping into Frog as well, and Lunchbox is gonna take down Stratus, as now they have the B site. It's a four versus two. DSU, for all intents and purposes, should have this round kind of put away. I definitely agree. I think their main goal here should just be to try to stay alive, keep the numbers up, and make sure you try to hold on to the guns that you have right now. Especially Lunchbox. Lunchbox is holding a Phantom right now, which is a huge gun to bring into this bonus round. We're only into second round. Yeah, th this is this is their bonus right now. No, third will be their bonus. Or yes, uh, yeah, the second okay. round. <laughs> You know what I mean. <laughs> they, they brought a phantom for the buy-up round. Now this is their bonus. Now they're into their bonus. Which I mean, bringing a phantom yeah. into their buy-up round is, is that's it's, it's a kind very of bold move. It's very bold. Although I I do I do hate and love seeing it when teams would run like, don't buy anything, get like three kills, and then buy an Odin. Or I don't, I don't think it's actually mathematically possible anymore, but like I know it used to be possible to buy an operator if you budgeted it right and you were able to get kills. Now, Billy, I have to learn that lineup. Because <laughs> that, that is a smoke that I would very much enjoy knowing. I, I know most of my old lineups on Split, but I don't know a whole lot of the new ones. A lot of action has taken place in mid as only Frog, and I think it's, yeah, it's Frog and Billy. And we coming back. Gonna be aggressive towards A, which is where three players from Wisconsin are gonna be sitting. And that's just what you get for having 20 HP, honestly. <laughs> Walking up, and I mean, that's one, that's a one shot. No matter, I don't think, no matter what gun you're holding, Munchbox not gonna quite get the burst fire on the fruit snacks. And this is where DSU needs to make a decision. They either need to, I mean, they have a little bit of time to play with if they're going to execute on A, but if they want any chance left. of going to B, which I don't think they're doing, is now they are executing. And they fall. Lunchbox not a. quite able to get it, and Song's gonna clean up Frog Fan. But no, that, that, that was do or die time, because if they wanted any time to get out to B, they had to leave like five seconds earlier. Yeah, 100%. And UW, UWL taking a lot of control um, between screens and on site and in heaven both. Like, it was really tough to try to play all of those angles and, you know, try to take all of those fights all at once. So, a tough round, but. Nonetheless, we have a full buy this round, so hopefully we can kind of step it up and get a little bit more ground. And now we see if history repeats itself, as we're seeing a, kind of a similar scoreline going into <laughs> this second half. DSU winning, pistol and buy up, and then losing the bonus, which isn't that unheard of. But legit getting the kill on the frog, now that they have vandals in their hands, and Jay Mula was also picked up without getting that, like... 
that trading frag. And unfortunately, Jay Mula is not able to heal himself. So nearly all of the damage that was done by DSU has been completely erased. Little over one minute left and DSU, they have a ton of control up heaven on A. That wall that Billy keeps throwing get, gains them a lot of ground that direction. They're able to clear out a ton of space, but executing onto site is another thing. Jamila is going to finally be taking down Potato towards B, but f <laughs> here we go, Billy over towards A. He's going to get lit up. Poor time for a reload, but Zeon is here for him. And now DSU are going to be coming through ropes and left. onto the A site. Very similar play we've been seeing from DSU. It's a, it's a great plan. Although usually you, when you take mid, you can usually get a better rotate onto B, but they've just been abusing this heaven control that Billy's been able to gain. Now they don't really have anything watching T site except for bodies. And now they know legit is over there. One enemy remaining. And it comes down to Zeon. Zeon's gonna get the long range phantom shot. Yeah, and I, 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 <laughs> I mean, honestly, with the amount of time left and just needing to save, I mean, DSU, they are going to be winning their, bo nope, not bonus, fourth round. Fourth. Yep, I can, I can maths, I can keep, I can keep track, don't worry. <laughs> but DSU, they are going to uh, learn from the past and come yeah, back into very it. very well executed rotate there. Going, to, going from mid straight to A after they realized that Billy had taken uh, a heaven control and they just completely left B. And you know, for D defenders, it's actually really tough to rotate long side like on the back of CT site from B to A. It takes a very long time as opposed to going through guns. So they have a lot of time to work with when they rotate and they can get a pretty easy bomb down, to be honest. Toxins going up. There's your line. I, Take I, notes. <laughs> I want, I want to see Wisconsin kind of counter Billy here. They've just kind of let him run into heaven each time. And Fruit Snacks, he is going to finally do it, so no heaven control from Billy this round. DSU going to have to find something run. else to do as Lunchbox. This is where that, this is where that ultimate's going to be coming into play. Attacking Killjoy. Trying not to get really too aggressive. Legit is going to finally fall. No players to tame. Force have a reload, but no kills going either direction. Four versus four. Health pool is a little in favor for Wisconsin as now Frog's wall is going to be going. We're seeing a nasty crossfire between Zeon and Jay Bula here. Just watching that CT entrance. It looks like we're gonna have three of Wisconsin try to retake Heaven Sight, but Astra Ult kind of stopping that a little bit as Frog Fan just watches the Heaven Peak. All coming down though, it's gonna get a little bit scary. He's good for one. And Stratus is gonna finally sit him down. Zeon though, gonna be getting the trade. Number still in advantage for DSU, and with that, like and time, time, it's definitely not enough time. Lunchbox is the only one who's going to be living through this. Can you get out? I think that I, I think, think Lunchbox does. lives. Yeah, Lunchbox yeah, lives. There we go. Nice round once again. The, the kills oil is what I think really secured that. To be honest, you know, taking that B heaven control and then having the Astro ult for post plant was a very very solid choice. And I mean, it, it's. You, it's, it's a reaction from Billy dying on A. That, that seems to be DSU's game plan, and since it was so late in this half, now they have that Killjoy ultimate up to be able to do that. And yeah. now, the thing is now, is now they don't have that. I still want to see Wisconsin pushing this A main, taking it to Billy, because DSU really hasn't been aggressing from A main a whole lot. I've got your well, essentially, the last Daddy. round, Wisconsin has since said, well, yeah, we're going to get Billy, but we can't necessarily hold on to all of the enemy. So, you know, it's either one site or the other. They couldn't necessarily one have enemy both remaining. And TSU is going to be exploding onto the B site. Billy is going to be taking it through sewer. He's going to be taking mid control now. 
just kind of waiting, but I love that the Fade still thinks Billy is here. <laughs> this is some excellent mind games we're seeing from DSU, and it, I don't think it's like anything they've like intentionally done. It's just Fruit Snacks knows that Billy always like lurks around here. This is the absolute mindset of high level play right here. <laughs> I mean, obvi obviously we're also seeing a save from Fruit Snacks. It's it's a right, smart idea, yeah. especially because they lost that the last two rounds, I think, at this point. And for it to be a 4v1, it is very unlikely to, you know, try to clutch this round. Okay, they're, they're hunting him down <laughs> in Fruit Snacks. <laughs> He's just gonna worm his way through, no one quite spotting him. He's gonna be watching into Lunchbox. He's gonna oh, live with 5 oh, HP! Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I, need to, peak. I need to clip that and send that to Lunchbox <laughs> so he knows how close he was for that. Oh my gosh. And I mean, uh, it's, uh, he's bringing in a hero rifle with five HP to spare. I mean, all you need is that last <laughs> one, but man. He's desperately <laughs> tapping AMD, <laughs> trying to just hang on to time. I think I could actually hear him screaming all the way from Wisconsin, not gonna <laughs> lie. That. So, ladies and gentlemen at home, if you could eat, if you heard a strange noise, it's probably Fruit Snacks, kind of worried for his life there. Billy, once again, setting up towards A as the rest of the team goes mid. And I'm loving the mix-up. From Wisconsin, but Brock fan gonna get two here. The mix-up from Wisconsin was a great plan, but they just didn't have the utility and the weaponry to really back that. The Trailblazer did not catch the omen, though. Looks like the Flash is gonna reveal him, though. The one difference, though, is that the Flash doesn't tell you exactly where they're at. Just that they're in the vent. <laughs> and I like love that gonna... Astra star that we saw from Frog there. It, I mean, Omen had a choice there. You either stay there, because if they didn't hear the teleport out, you use the vortex and you suck the Omen in and then you get a free kill. However, by here, by just the mere fact of putting it down there, you were able to make that Omen make a decision. And he chose to teleport out, so then you just scoop that star back up. It creates a temporary smoke for you, and then you, you have it still for the next round. Billy's gonna, gonna be gonna snaking be his way all the way through A, up, Here. through screens. It looks like it's gonna be a 4 v 2 here on A site, as both of Wisconsin is gonna be playing from their spawn. Omen's gonna be teleporting across the door here again. I think Billy One knows that he's there too, so he's gonna peek he's out gonna and get Billy better. gonna ego peek fruit snacks. You're not getting out of this one too, so now we see DSU kind of pulling a Uno reverse card and rolling away with the attacking side yeah, here on split. I think you were wrong about this side, this this map being a defensive side. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's just the mentality of players now now that split has been out of rotation for so long because I remember people were complaining so heavily about split, <laughs> which was really unfortunate because split was like my favorite map for the longest time. But people were always like, oh, Split, I don't want to play Split and all that. And now it's back, and pe I love hearing that people are just, I'm so nostalgic for this. Well, and you have to understand that for every round that Wisconsin buys that DSU wins, DSU essentially gets a free round after that because they have to now buy short, and they aren't going to be nearly as... Economically sound. <laughs> Sorry, no. I was paying attention. I was watching Zeon jump into heaven here. I was gonna point out that the Trailblazer didn't hit the wire there, so the wire was still all good, but Zeon jumping in. I will say, I have not seen a Zeon judge yet, a raised judge, and I'm a little disappointed, especially here on Split. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers entirely. Frogfan like in a very dangerous position as he was in his actual form, but legit not quite capitalizing on it. He's good for one, but Zeon's here and looking to finish out the round. It's down once again just to Fruit Snacks, the survivor of Wisconsin. Oh, he's gonna get wall banged right on the other side of stairs. A Guardian of Dream isn't gonna net him too much fruit as. Now they're at match point. DSU bringing this half back, and really, once they got the, the once they got the full weaponry in their hand, everyone had a good buy on the attacking side. 
they're running away with it. Oh, of course. And, you know, if Wisconsin j- decides to force up and buy, you know, a Vandal or Phantom with light shields, like, it looks like they kind of are right now, you know, they have to really, really hit their shots. Otherwise, it's just so much easier for them to lose more eco here. I mean, there, there's no eco left to lose. It's match point, so... That's true. They, I mean, true. every everything, every shot counts. You cannot afford to make any mistakes, especially since you need four just to get to overtime. Can you promise four flawless rounds with how DSU has been playing this attacking side? It's very unlikely. With five holds, it is possible. Potato going to be getting a bit aggressive. And here we see one of the ultimates going to be netting a kill onto Frog Fan. That's a great way to start this round. Billy's not quite aggressing up towards A as the... Uh, the Fade is going to be using a bunch of utility to keep him out. I think that Fruit Snacks and Billy have, destroyed. like, a personal vendetta against each other, maybe, because every single round they've been fighting on A-Site, especially on ramp. Oh, Billy, he's going to get spotted out by Fruit Snacks just as all of his utility goes up. And now Billy's making the, making the call, push to A, push to A, and the Viper's pit goes down. And I'm really be liking a very where good Viper. This is left. a great Viper ultimate, especially because of what it's covering. It gets all the way out in the hall, and it even goes into the corner of the site there, which all they have to do now is just back off and Finish. sit. I mean, there, there's two mentalities with this Viper ultimate. You can either put it on site to like keep all of site clear, or you can put it where they're entering, and then they have to push all the way through their site. And as we're talking, and I'm swooning about my Viper main again, <laughs> UWL is going to be pushing onto site, and it's down just a song, as Jay Mula with a triple kill in the last round is gonna be taking split 13 to eight. Wow. And I mean, that that's a great way to bring Split back into the rotation. I mean, we haven't seen that map in, in how long? It's been so long. I, I, oh, I miss it so much. I'm so happy it's back. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 swear, I swear the first time I played it, it was in, I think, a... Oh, what, what's the what's the what's the one? Spike rush. Spike. That's the word I was looking for. I was about to say swift play again, but no, it was it was a spike rush, and it's just we loaded in, and everyone was like, <gasps> and I had to throw all of my one ways again, and it it was perfect. And the best part is that even with the changes added to split, it, you know, it didn't really change too much in my eyes. You know, it didn't make it better or worse. It's just you know some minor changes to help both the defending and attacking side out just a little bit. It was quality of life changes. Yeah, especially towards a. Which was the the he, the heaven like rafters area that used to go all the way from the window of heaven all the way to that corner. In which case you had two fifty fifty. I mean they were right on top of each other, but it was like you either hold right below it or you hold right above it. And if you pick the wrong one, the other one has the advantage on you. Right. And so now by removing that entire portion of that like gangway. You, you've essentially just made it one now 50-50. Right. However, I do hate that there's that little step now to like, I mean, it was there the whole time, but now it's like even more prominent that you step down. And so when I'm pushing on, I want to like peek, like go back into that corner and I step down and that's always the moment people peek me <laughs> yeah, when one, their aim is bloomed and all that. One really big note, a change that I noticed was that the, on B Heaven side, there used to be that bo the box that Sage was actually hiding behind at one point. There was a trash can exactly where she was crouched at. Mm -hmm. And that's that's something that's so minuscule, but it makes a huge impact because if enemies or defenders, I'm sorry, if defenders are on that box, they have to, attackers now have to change their crosshair placement so much more as opposed to if they weren't, if that box wasn't there and they couldn't jump on top of that trash can. So, you know, it, it makes a, it's just very small uh, QOL changes, like you said, that, that make a huge difference. But that was Split. We will be seeing Haven next. And one, one thing that I like to point out all the time, especially when we get Haven, which I'm going to have to change this up because Lotus now also just throws this out the window, is every map has its shtick, its little unique little bit. Splits originally was the ropes, which now I guess a lot of other maps have stolen as well. But it, Haven has the three sites. Lotus kind of stole that and also has three hey, sites, hey. however. You know, I don't know if there's anybody out there, but I'm, I'm Lotus Gang all the way. I'm Lotus Gang. I, I can't. I love I the honestly map. I think it is it's such a fun map. 
and I think it's fresh, and the doors are very fun to play with. <laughs> honestly, I haven't had too much with the, with the doors. Honestly, I, I kind of have you have you pressed them enough? Times? Oh, I I press them all the time, but it's like I I walk through it. and I'm like, okay, this is a more complicated ascent door, <laughs> I guess. Well, just let me should. walk through it. But I think it's a lot of fun. But I mean, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see. Uh, Lotus this game. They, they, they did ban it out, but we shame. are seeing quite a few of the new agent changes. Uh, specifically, we're not seeing Chamber. Um, we kind of talked about some of his nerfs uh, earlier in, in this stream being, I mean, it, every single piece of utility was, was, was hit. Um, but also, I know Cypher, Killjoy, and a, a couple of the other Sentinels got, Viper. got some good quality of life changes. Viper got nerfed, and I'm still salty <laughs> with Riot about that because it's such a such a pain of a nerf, too. But Cypher's utility, now his camera can't be destroyed by his teammates. Um, I th still think his tripwires can. I, I, they may have added that in the patch notes that I wasn't reading earlier. Um, I should ask our resident Cypher main on Blue <laughs> Team, but um, but no, Cypher's utility can't be destroyed. Um, his like the health of it was increased to it used to be one and now it's twenty, which I still think any gun can one shot, but I think if it's on the edge of like a Silva shock dart, it won't necessarily kill it outright. Um, and I'm trying to I'm running through my head. No, Viper's nerfs though. <laughs> Dude, you you knew they, anyone who knows Valorant knows I was gonna bring this up today. And honestly, you know, I don't really see it being a huge problem in terms of high elo. I think they mainly nerfed Viper for low elo players. <laughs> because of me. <laughs> <laughs> because I noticed that you know with the the ult changes for anyone who doesn't know the Viper Viper ult you used to be you used to be able to stay inside of the Viper ult for 15 seconds before <laughs> before it dissipated and now you have to like you can run outside I mean, of the viper ult but you have to be inside within 8 seconds unless they, you they don't want the viper ult they dropped it from 15 to 8 which hurts and the recharge time went from 5 to 25 huge and so you're out of it let's let's say you are out of it for now only like 3 seconds you now have to wait 10 seconds more than double what it used to be for it and you're only out for three seconds. It's like, yeah, a lot of the, a lot so, of the times I notice that, you know, usually when I pop my Viper ult, they're just gonna rotate, and then I have to cancel it anyway, and it makes me super sad. So, but I mean, what what it what allowed me to do, and I, this this is I have to admit probably why they nerfed the ultimate was, you could sit in it, and you, or you could pop it, and there's certain spots where there's like a little corner where you can peek out. And then watch a little corner, shoot someone, and instantly duck back in. But now you can only sit and watch that corner for like four seconds. Otherwise, you're you're just gone. You don't have an ultimate anymore. Exactly. And they made the ultimate eight ult charges. I know. And it hurts so, so it's bad. been harder to get the ult. So you don't see that ult happen as frequently in halves as you you know naturally would before the nerf, so, and so very my, sad. My indecisiveness is also coming into play. It's like, I don't want to pop it now because I want to use it in a turn <laughs> around where it's going to matter, but then I don't pop it until, like, halfway through it, and I'm like, oh, I'm never getting another one. Or you try to pop it and you get shot before it covers <laughs> <That> you. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop swooning about Viper because there's other agent changes. I'm sure I've been trying to come up with them in my head. <laughs> You definitely know them. Come well, on, Nuka. <laughs> what, what one change that I want to see in the future, one that has not happened, but one that I expect to see in the future, and one more change that I want to see in the future is the first one being changes to Harbor. So oh, please the, do, some do of the tell. first changes that happened to Neon when Neon first came out is that her wall used to do damage to teammates when you would throw up the wall. They reworked that so that now you, your teammates are no longer damaged by Neon's wall. I don't think opponents are either. I don't think it does damage at all anymore. Really? I don't think so, no, actually. <laughs> but regardless, Harbor kind of had the same concept in terms of his walls, both the one you can push forward and the one that you can kind of draw your own little line with. You kind of edge a sketch a... Cascade and Rising Tide. <laughs> I've actually never played Harbor, to be honest. I oh, think. come on. I'm not a huge fan. But I, I edge a sketch wall. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sketch wall and the push both wall. Both of those walls actually slow your teammates down as well when you try to push through them. So that's kind of one small QOL change that I want to see later on is just kind of matching... Uh, um, matching up uh, 
uh, agents with their same uh, abilities and kind of like working that out just a little bit. A second change that I want to see is actually nerfing a little bit of Fade. <laughs> I think that Fade is one of the strongest initiators out there. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on it's that. It's just such a, like, and the ultimate is so strong, you can't hear anything, you're down to 40 HP, you're tracked. It's very hard to, you know, actually be able to counter something like that. And I just, I honestly don't see any way to counter that, to be honest, especially on such a, a long map like Haven. This will be a very fun match to see. It looks like we're seeing Jay Blue here is kind of hovering fade, and I'm, I'm super excited to watch that. Yep, there we go, the lock-in. However, I would like to point out we, we're, we're seeing less chamber, Yes. And we're seeing more Breach. Stratus going to be hovering on the Breach and locking it in as I'm talking about it. And this was something that I had to get back into the swing of, like, higher ELO Valorant before coming and casting today because I was, like, realistically haven't watched, like, any C-Val or any Challengers tournaments at all. But I was watching it, I'm going to admit, in class today, <laughs> just having it on the background, and I was surprised how much Breach I was seeing over and over again. And it was on maps that I never, like, thought about seeing Breach on, such as Haven. And uh, after watching it, I was like, well, duh. I mean, Fade is pretty good on Haven. Your and it's for kind of similar reasons. Fade being a, like, info gathering, but really it's the ultimate, able to cover the same amount of area. Breaches being able to kick people off of the off of the defuse and stunning everyone who is basically on an entire site it's is a, huge. They're both very very large ultimates to be honest. And Breach, like you mentioned, Breach is just such honestly such an annoying character to play <laughs> against with the amount of flashes that they have. They're so hard to be able to see in time before you like to, to look away. And they the, last forever. And the charge, like say someone's planting for C long, you can just um, hit Cubby with your charge and then you can pretty much get them to peek you it's pretty simple to be honest and it's just such a such an annoying character to play against to be honest i hate i hate breach <laughs> you, you hate breach of course i love playing breach you, know? <laughs> you hate playing against breach i hate playing against i guess i mean his, his stun is pretty annoying but i mean that that's kind of what he he's he's now fallen into his niche finally because i know breach when, when when i first started playing valorant the the my entire goal was I hated people locking in my agent, and so I decided I was going to play the agents that nobody else played. And so I played Breach and Viper. <laughs> and then Viper got buffed to the point where everyone was playing Viper. And so I, I loved seeing it, but nobody ever like picked up Breach. And at that time, I was playing for DSU a little bit, so I kind of fell into a team role. But now we'll be seeing DSU starting on the attack here on Haven and a very quick execute. Going to be stalled a little bit by that Breach. But Frogfan, with less than 10 seconds off the clock, they're going to get spiked down and barely a scratch on them, too. Utility is going to be thrown out left and right from both teams. Legit's going to be good for one. Legit good for two. And Fruit Snacks coming in with the classic right click. Frogfan, all shots from the frenzy going wide. Lunchbox is good for one. But with no Molly's quite left, he's good for two, but he has to get them off this defuse, and Song is gonna get the spray with the, the friends. Defuse, too. That was almost really, really well executed play for him there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get all of the picks, but I mean, it's hard to expect five kills <laughs> in the first round when you're. I mean, I've seen pistol round <laughs> aces, not quite with a classic, but <laughs> I, I, I think that first pistol round was legitimately less than one minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. They was, really pushed out of window there and they really executed site to be honest. Of course they got kind of pinched in from A and C and you know that happens a lot on this map is that when you try to plant in on B, you often see a lot of C side and A side pushes which is very scary as an attacker. I mean that's kind of the, the point of heaven. Haven? Heaven. Haven. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. But now we're seeing legit push up with the marshal. Gonna be hitting the shot on Billy. Fortunately bought up. And legit gonna be taking Billy down. Legit good for two. Now on that fragging roll of Jet. Off of the raise on split. So now I'll, I'm expecting to see not only the marshal in their hand already, but also an operator later in this game. Lunchbox is gonna be good for one on C, and they are gonna get the spike down. But I mean, now you're just kind of living on a prayer. And Lunchbox is yet again alone. <laughs> Oh, 
He is going to get out. He's going to be good for one. Almost good for two. You see, if he would have pushed up to grab that Guardian, things could have ended very differently for him. However, that, that's about as much as you could ask for from Lunchbox. So still well played, getting the spike down, getting another kill, especially since he's on the KJ. He's already got his ultimate. Yeah, and I said, like we mentioned before in previous, in, in last map actually, getting two kills on a bonus round, even though you, like when you lose a bonus round, getting two kills when they buy up is still incredibly, incredibly huge for them because they just essentially knock out 70% of the ego Mathematically. I don't know the actual math. I watched a TikTok on it. I, <laughs> I watched a TikTok. <laughs> Aren't you like in trig right now? Come on, you should be knowing some math. I know triangles. <laughs> I know triangles, not economy. <laughs> not not the ins and outs of, Val of Valorant's uh, money system, but... Yeah, teach me something real, DSC. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like DSC is going to have a kind of an A and C push here as they pull by. Billy and Xeon are going to be pushing up to C. Not to go off on a complete tangent, but I know we have a Harry Potter class. How much How much do you think it would cost to get Palmer to teach a <laughs> Valor economy class? <laughs> anyway, anyway, Billy back on subject. Very nice shot to the smoke there. DSU is going to be finally getting the plant on C now that we're back on <laughs> back on subject. DSU, they, they, it was a little you bit of a rough entrance, but now they have the, the spike. Not quite going down. Gonna be I also think... having a third round ult here from Killjoy. That's gonna be super huge for them as they get this bomb down. Area is clear. Yeah, I think they just threw. I think there was a bit of a mix up on who was holding the spike and putting that KJ ultimate down because they wanted the KJ to be able to get that ultimate back up. Kind of banking remains. on that Lunchbox ultimate this whole round. Getting fruit snacks there. Contracts is going huge this entire time. It's just down to song, but so many players from DSU are lit. It's down just to Jay Mula. He's so getting the spam and, and the pistol right, right click. click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very well executed there. They had a, a really good like wide push there. I noticed that a couple of them were in a, a garden there for a while, and then they all just kind of rotated as soon as they realized that they had a lot of C control there. So that was really well executed. DSU, they, now they have the guns in their hands, and they're able to do such a like good amount of damage to Wisconsin's economy due to Wisconsin buying into that round, trying to trying to win their bonus round. That there, DSU is going to have a full buy. Wisconsin's going to have a pretty broken buy. However, we will be seeing the jet knives coming out. Stratus only buying the. Shorty, I would almost call it the Bucky. I've been doing that all night. I don't think I've slipped up quite yet, but again, I was like, no, it's not the Bucky. It's okay. I actually get the Marshal and the Sheriff mixed up <laughs> literally all the time. It's, it's honestly driving me insane. <laughs> you'd think after playing this game so much, you'd have the, the guns <laughs> names yeah, figured I out. Yeah, I all the guns, and then you just start mixing them all up. Mm, yes, I, I, love, I love mixing up the Marshal and the Sheriff. <laughs> That's a bad one. We see a really good but. default here from DSU, just kind of trying to get a pick here, seeing what's out there, and getting some information as to who is all on which site. But it looks like the guy will be rotating towards Garage and C here as they get some gar uh, Garage control. Nobody was watching KO. We definitely didn't see you flash yourself. <laughs> and now okay. I'm loving, I'm loving the C control. They, they early, the early like aggression, early default, trying to get as much area control as possible. J Mulu gonna be with that me. Either, Jay Mulu. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm definitely not hitting clip every time. <laughs> miss some YouTube. No, I won't. That that would be that would be too much for our stream guys to handle. But now, who legit can be taking down Jay Mula? And Jet that's knives gonna be coming out here though. It's gonna be a little bit tight here for DSU as they're all kind of just sticking on top of the bomb here. They have to expect the flank. Zeon with the long range. Oh, and nice Phantom. Nice flank there. Ooh, and Song is going to be coming in oh, from Garage, wow. too. It just fell apart from that flank. And DSU had to know about that, too, due to Jay Mula dying so far back. I mean, he died basically in their spawn. Yeah, a very tough round. Of course, it could have been due to miscommunication. It could have been due to so many different things, to be honest. But I did notice that a lot of them were just sitting kind of on top of the bomb, just kind of jiggling a whole bunch of different angles. And 
that kind of took like almost took me aback a little bit to be honest. I didn't understand what exactly was the play there. You know, maybe it was that they were calling out the jet was in their spawn, and so they wanted like, to triple peek the jet. Like, well, like I'm assuming the KJ would go sit back toward down C long, maybe play for Molly's. That's a very a standard very common, yeah. KJ lineup. But now that you know that it's a, it's jet, and B, it's strat or not stratus, uh, legit is back there and legit has been on a tear this entire time yeah we've seen him eagle peek a lot of things especially in the second round with the marshall eagle peeking a main and getting i think three picks off of a main but even now we see him playing all the way up to window through mid that's a that's a right. very dangerous angle to be holding i mean it's good for probably one and for anyone other than a jet Maybe seen, though, trying to get a cheeky wall bang but it looks like legit's gonna get he's good for one mid. and there you go billy finally gonna sit him down evening up the score line jambula is gonna be good for another over on a and now dsu are finally gonna be I'm executing realizing. over on a site yep they will be finally executing on a as the rest of wisconsin is going to be rotating over they have the tools to get back into this. I believe we've only seen, I think one flash from the breach, so he should still have his aftershocks and at least one flash, but. Yeah, forget that, we do have Killjoy set up though. So again, it's gonna be very hard, unless you kill Killjoy, of course, it's gonna be very hard to try to get something worked out here for Lunchbox Wisconsin. is good for one, but some of them come standing. back for two. Stratus is also good for one. And there we see the Killjoy lineup coming out. There is the second one. Breach is hunting him one down. Lunchbox is good for one. It's down just Song versus Lunchbox. And he gets That's the lunchbox nasty is good flick. For another. Well done. Lunchbox is going huge here on Haven. I mean, they, they, I mean, he was doing a lot of work on Split, but now we're really seeing him come into his own and really show off some of that that skill that he has on the KJ here on Haven. Very, very strong character to play on this map. I just able to hold so much with that turret and the the ultimate too being able to get in so many of the different corners is able to pretty yeah. much cover like an entire third of the map at a time. Yeah, if you have sight control and you have an ult, you can throw the ult down essentially, try to get the bomb down, and then half of the bomb is gone by the ult by the time the ult is gone. So it's honestly such a huge advantage to have. I would love to see a thousand oh, thieves for a three piece. <laughs> My lord, DSU just. As we're trying to talk strats, as we're trying to entertain, they're just like, mm, here we go. And they just win the, the gunfight. It's so fast pace. But I'd love to see, especially now that they're on B, maybe like a 100 Thieves steal uh, play where you put the KJ down <laughs> in a short and then you're able to plant the like, KJ all there. You, you, I think the Odin actually can wall bang they in can. that little that little they can. gap. They actually can, which is honestly such a crazy wall bang. Stratus and Song, they're showing off their prowess on the retake, but Billy and Jaymula with the superior weaponry are going to take this one back. I will say though, for as like, close as it's been, it really seems like DSU was able to get the execute first, like consistently. They're able to get on site with the bomb down, which is huge for your economy. But I'm really, see like I'm starting to get scared for what uh, Wisconsin can do now that they have full full buys, full utility and all that on those retakes. Yeah, I, I totally so agree. This is actually kind of a repeat of what we had seen last map. If they, if we win this round, we will likely secure the next rounds where we will have a buy pretty much every single round. However, the same goes for Wisconsin. If Wisconsin wins this round, they'll have a buy before we will. So it's kind of a coin toss, even though it is three to three and we, we've honestly been doing very well. And TSU gonna be getting the spike down with that Astra wall, basically for free. And almost, like, yeah, actually unscathed completely. Mr. Potato is gonna be dropping without damaging Billy at all. And so that's a spike down. Yes, it's one uh, taken out of DSU's hands, but it's one of five. And again, another Killjoy trying to just keep them off the bomb. And that'll pretty much get the bomb down all the way down to 20, 15 seconds, maybe. There's not a whole lot you can do you have to play this retake exceptionally well and it, and looks, it looks like legit's just gonna be playing for those exit frags honestly and i would do the same in this situation because this 
this round is an absolute coin toss. If anyone gets picked here, it's gonna be very hard to try to climb that Oh, back. legit, it's gonna be taking down Zeon. And Stratus is gonna be taking down Jamula on those exits, but they do take down, they take down get one and more. Stratus. And so I, I was great for those exit frags. Unfortunately, it was on Zeon who was holding a judge, which he tried I to love satchel out. It was almost a really good play, to be honest. I love seeing the Zeon judge, but I, it needs to be flashier, Zeon. Come on, that's what you're known for. <laughs> you're known for the flashy judge. But it, yeah, it was it was one rifle and then a judge that you lost. So it's not a whole lot. Not not necessarily really. a huge loss in terms of economy there. So. And so now we'll be seeing DSU going into this round now with a very healthy ec economy lead. They do still have three ultimates. We'll be seeing Billy popping one of his own. The uh, going to be flashing high there as Fade tries to counter it with her own ult. Fruit Snack's going to be getting a double on Xeon and Billy there, but looks like Frog Fan is going to be able to get the trade there. Just flashing through. Once they clear this up a little bit, oh. Stratus is good for another. If they can get the res on Billy, this would be huge. It looks, like reload, it looks like they're going to. looks like it's going to happen. There we go. It's a three versus three. Gonna and Legit's going to be taking down it's only down one before game. Lunchbox sits him down. Like it's still a one versus and two, but... Lunchbox with a three. <laughs> Lunchbox clutching it up once again. That must have been very hectic through his screen because as soon as he picked up Billy, <laughs> Billy went back down. J Lunchbox got two, tried to get the bomb down, and then Omen and then peaked fin him. finally just had to, had to clean it out. But <laughs> with wow. that round, even though it was just Lunchbox, I mean, they're, they've won so many rounds in a row now that they're still sitting pretty. Only Zeon's going to be in yeah. a rough spot, but that's to be expected. That's essentially <laughs> what I was saying but earlier as well. Like, if they win the the buy that Wisconsin, or they, they win the round when Wisconsin buys, they essentially have another free rap round so long as, you know, Wisconsin doesn't get too many free picks off of them. So all that DSU has to do is play smart. Don't let them play smart Zeon. corners. Don't no, let them play in corners. <laughs> And I, I swear to everyone at home, the outlines that you guys are seeing on your screen, that's just an observer thing. They definitely, They're just they, they definitely cannot see each other. <laughs> They're just that good. But it looks like Wisconsin here is playing two in garage, and then one on B, and then one on A. So Seaside is essentially free. Fruit Snacks took down, uh, who was it, Billy? Yeah, it was Billy down on A, giving, giving up Spike as well. So we saw the we we heard the voice line. The spike was down, and we immediately saw the cipher and the omen rotate over all the way to A. And now DSU is getting out of dodge and making their way over towards C. But it's such a predictable read. Wisconsin having omen and cipher both go back into C T of C here. Able to get one shot. Wisconsin, they have the they have the numbers advantage, but not the weapons. Cypher and Breed is going to be holding here to try to negate the plan, but it looks like it's going to go down. Zeon is going to whiff not just the ultimate, but also his shots. It's down just the frog man with three. Uh, <laughs> and they're going to get, I think, a thrifty. That is that is a thrifty round, unless unless like something like because I think someone bought a guardian, unless that like disqualifies it. Yeah, it does. Ah. Of course. Ooh. According to Valorant, that disqualifies <laughs> it. But a, a, essentially, a thrifty round for Wisconsin is going to net them a great, like, a great boon in Honestly, terms of. And uh, it all came economy. down to Billy dying with the bomb on A main, because that allowed them to rotate, and then they had a really predictable rotate going towards C, and. That was they, but hey, they wasted two ults for that, so it wasn't a total loss for DSU, you know. But they now have the ability to buy, and so now it's going to be a really another one of those coin toss rounds, to be honest. Legit, going to be forcing up into an operator. Not even forcing up. The dude still has like sitting on four thousand credits, and there we go. We hear the operator sing. They had to have known that there was going to be an operator eventually, especially since they're sitting on the jet. And now that basically just eliminates C as an option for them. Just the, the, the mere presence of an operator, that gun is just so powerful. Billy gonna be trying to take some space here up on B. It looks like one way. Jay Mula's gonna get him in sewers. And the plant will be going down. Three versus five in favor of DSU. I can do this Five versus two. <laughs> Jinx. Five versus one. Okay, Billy. 
and they're just still watching that angle. And now that first oh. axe is made, the presence known, the rest of DSU is going be executing on to it. Bullying fruit snacks at this point. Four timing to pull out your arrows. Believe it or not, even though your arrows, like, are tasers, essentially, I still favor the guns over the bow, not gonna lie. I don't know, I'm a, I'm a pretty huge lineup fan, to be honest. I love seeing them. I would, I'm not the type of guy to spend 45 minutes shooting at a wall, personally, but I do think that they're very fun to see. <laughs> We see the, the skill and that, you know, we were talking earlier about seeing the breach pick and how it's nice to see that agent come back into it. But I've also been seeing quite a lot of Soba as well. Soba used to be flashing high here. Soba used to be like the default initiator peak, but with the in like with the installments of Sky and especially Fade, Soba kind of just fell out of favor. Couldn't really. Couldn't really bring to the table what everyone else could, but now we've been seeing him kind of find his own again. Especially on map, this map, Haven. I think Soba is a very, very solid pick here on this map. Specifically on this map, to be honest. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like this map was made for him, if that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, an original character, Just one of the original maps, The amount maps, of walls probably. that you can shoot through to negate a plant. And, like, C Long is like you the perfect not. distance to negate a plant. We're seeing, we're, the seeing that line we're seeing the there. silver lineups right there. But Killjoy's old, and it looks like Breach tried to stop it, but wasn't quite able to get it there. That's another one of those agent changes that have come through is KJ's utility, or like her ultimate's health got buffed mm -hmm. from 150 to 200. And so the- Which doesn't even sound like a lot, to be honest. It's just such a minuscule change, but it makes the difference. It's the difference between it breaking on something like that, what we just saw with Breach's um, charge, and it not breaking, so. See, I don't think, of, uh, unless it's like straight at the base of the Aftershock, I don't think an Aftershock will actually take down a an ultimate. And as we're talking, is oh gonna be cleaning up house. Nothing Wisconsin could do to get Last in there. They just the all head. died at the choke. Bullets flying and grenades exploding. Sit them all down. And now we'll be seeing the last round in the half. A very different story than what we saw on Split. DSU. And Lunchbox now really, really showing what he can do on this map. Getting 12 kills in the first half here. Well, before the first half even. So very well done. Uh, we, we, we see we see at least 15. He gets a triple kill at the least here. You think so? You want to put money on it? Can we, can we get a Twitch pers uh, like uh, predictions thing real quick? How about you take my notes for all my classes tomorrow? I <laughs> don't know about that it. one. <laughs> <laughs> we see an Astro oh, go down here for mid as Xeon tries to take a little bit of space. And I do really like this Astro wall That's because like it's able to get you so much space. And you're so quiet by doing it because this wall blocks all, nearly all sound. You're able; they don't like necessarily know that you have. Gonna those. have to be careful for this oh. jet flank, but it looks like Billy is gonna be there to stop it. The muzzle was sticking out. the The very tip of the gun was sticking sticking out around the corner. Frog fan looking to get a little bit of garage control and try to flank the omen here. Billy just with that. Such a strong yeah, angle. A double here. Oh, well, oh, I thought he almost died to his own name, to be honest. <laughs> I thought he did too. It's down just the fruit oh. snacks to try to finish this up. But Billy's <laughs> going to be running in with the shorty. And then cleaning it wow. up. Another, I guess it's attacking side, attacker sided again on this map as well. But we're seeing DSU now that they are on the attack. Going to be taking the advantage going into uh, the second half here. And. So I never I never mentioned this, but when I did mention that I really enjoy Lotus, I forgot to mention this. I hate I know Haven. you hate Haven. I absolutely hate Haven. And here's why. I think that Haven is such an attacker friendly map. And that's mainly because you can it's it's very, very hard for the defender to read which way you're gonna go. And the rotates take a very, very large amount of time to rotate, say, from C to A. Safely, that is. And maybe that's why I'm not very good at Haven, and that's why I hate Haven. <laughs> but I think that it's a very hard map destroyed. to be able to understand. It's almost as if you have to be able to read the minds of the opponent, and I'm just not very good at that just yet. Just yet, he says. Just yet. I'll get there. Oh, One day. Uh, One ne day. Next year, you'll be seeing on me commentating on Nuko, actually, on, oh, on yeah. Varsity Team, right? Yep, 100%. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gold so <bite>. radiant two. <laughs> in in what? Uh, in what? Six months? I I believe in it. Make it four. In <laughs> four. All right. Well, we'll be seeing some early trades. Not even trades. DSU is actually just going to have a have a numbers up. It looks like they got unscathed too. But we see three of Wisconsin going into Garden here as they try to take some space. Jay Malou is going to have to back off here and try to calm that. Which is, it's it's weird that they're re-aggressing A because that's where they lost their number, and so you maybe see them like go like back out a little bit. But DSP is playing it such so well. Frog fan not playing inside of his smokes. He's not going to be able to get out though as Fruit Snacks gets the trade. But Jay Malou is going to be able to get one on A main. Jimmy Miller almost getting the swing onto the song, but really coming in to clean it up. I mean, what I love there is that DSU didn't, like, they they, they firmly had control, and they're, the great discipline to not, like, overextend. We saw Jay Mula getting a little bit aggressive towards the A long, but really it was just out around the corner. It wasn't all, like, like they weren't all the way up. In like in the the garden, I can't talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's one another reason why I think Haven is such a hard map to play on is that the defenders can almost like lose the rounds themselves just by over rotating so much. And so like you really need to kind of stick to your post and make sure that you're kind of trusting your teammates a little bit to be able to hold down where they're located. Zeon not quite able to escape. He has a great spam through, and Billy is going to be good for one as he's getting the backstab, but. No, the rush down through garage is gonna net a spike, spike plant for Wisconsin lacrosse. They get like it. is on a very, very early flank here as he gets one, and it looks like he's gonna he's be good, good for, for two. two. 19 health and a dream, but he's frog fan. Frog fan is gonna be good for two as well. And that was just a great retake. Everyone getting a kill where it matters. It wasn't necessarily that, like, letting them take the site and getting the plant down was not the end of the world because they were immediately on that. On that. I think Jay Mula being able to rotate as fast as he did, like, very well won that round for them because that forced the the last two people for Wisconsin to look over and see where Jay Mula was at, and Frog Fan was able to see that and push forward as well. So that was very huge for them as well. Which is just great communication on the side of DSU as I mean, Zeon is getting rushed down. And he's like, they're looking at me, they're yeah, looking at they're, me, peek him. Everyone yeah. is rushing garage, and so that's what allows the A ro quick rotate. It's like, oh, yeah. Because well, that kind of play with one other person sticking towards A falls apart completely because more than likely you're running with your knife out trying to get as oh, much ground as quickly as possible, but... And looks like Lunchbox. Lunchbox is going to be pushing all the way up close here with a shorty. Is he going to be able to get Cypher here? Oh, oh, he's oh, 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 oh he's it looks like he was spotted. He's going to have to retreat. Grenade. That was Potato's like sixth sense knowing something was off. <laughs> Potato's good for Xeon. They now know that Lunchbox is here. They know that DSU, we were just talking about how they're not getting too aggressive here. And now they do something like this and Billy's going to come and get the kill. Onto Potato on 5 HP too, but it looks like Wisconsin's really trying to push for A main control here and they're gonna look like they get through sewers and Jay Malou's gonna go down. Jay Malou's good for one. Frog fan not quite able to get another one. It's down just to Billy Spike and planted. Lunchbox. Billy only have 5 HP here. If he gets hit even even breathed on, to be honest, <laughs> he's pretty much dead. I say, I think the I think, yeah, a shock dart will take him down. If he walks into his own molly, it'll kill him. Looks like Lunchbox is going to be good for one. Last player standing. There we go. Billy's going to fall. It's down 34 HP. It's doable as the other players are also low. He has to get the headshot oh, here on Song, though. Reposition his crosshair and couldn't get the flick in time. Which, I mean, you can't ask for miracles all the time. We've seen Lunchbox pulling out all the stops this whole map and sitting on 16 and 8 right now. I think, honestly, they're sitting okay, <laughs> oh, even no, though they lost Billy. that Never round. Mind. You know, it's 5 and 10. They've got a little bit of rounds to play with and, you know, experiment and see how they want to play these next few rounds here. We noticed that just last round, they were very, very aggressive. You know, we saw Lunchbox going all the way up into C-Long. We saw Billy going it's all the way through mid. Chaos. It was honestly really scary. But they managed to pull away, even though they lost quite a bit of health throughout those fights. Yeah, definitely knocking it down to only two players is huge.
especially when you have such a hard round lead. You, you like you said, you definitely have these rounds to toy with and play with. You may, you but fit. you also want to be careful because you kind of you can notice that like other teams can get into a rhythm and then you start to feel almost a little bit scared, and that can be frightening as well. Now, we were talking two rounds ago about how Jay Mula doesn't push all the way up A long, and here we see him pushing up all the way up A long. I think it's just the casting curse at that point. It's, uh, they, it's your fault. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> Looks like Wisconsin's trying to push for some garage control here as we see three push in, but there's one and be two, good for one, for two. Zeon. Looks like a positive trade. Lunchbox is just trying to hold down here. Fruit Snacks is good for one. The flank, it is now still kind of held by Frog Fan, but now the execute comes Some in. Really Stratus. good Astra Stars for DSU there. 30 seconds left. Stratus is going to be slow peeking through that smoke, which is going to cost him his life. Now, Lunchbox has to know that both of them are here due to the dart and the paranoia, and he looks like they're going to rotate in time and help him out. Billy's there for him. Frog Fan going to be coming up as well, so there's no chance of going to rotate out there, too. And now we're seeing a 5 to 11 in favor of DSU, which you're at a really tough point if you're Wisconsin because this is the round where you have to be like, do we force and this try is, to get something? This is in a which scary case, round. I think that being down by a couple of rounds while they're at 11 is a very scary round because like you mentioned, yes, you can either force and if you get a, a win, that's awesome. Or you can save for the final round, but then you're sitting on 12 the entire time. <laughs> it's very the Full pressure surprise. is on. And in a normal game, that's pressure. But this is not going to be map point, or it's going to be map point. But it's also going way. to be match point, as this is a best of three. And if so, if somehow, and it's all entirely possible that we see Wisconsin come through and win this map, we'd be going to Icebox, but with a 5 to 11 on this kind of a buy, you're asking for a small miracle at it that is, point. It is quite the slim chance. Especially now that we've seen DSU kind of get into their stride. The first half of Split, they were kind of still warming up and still getting, the, getting their shots up and all good. And I also got to point out, thank you, Riot, for adding the, like, random skin lines because you're seeing a bunch of the older skin lines <laughs> like that Oni Phantom. <laughs> it's Split and Oni Phantom coming back are just the biggest nostalgia for me. It's going to be flying, firing here, but Jamal is going to go down to some knives. But it looks like Deesu Frog Fan is going to be good for two. Stratus and Zeon going back and forth. Zeon's good for two. It's down just a one player for Wisconsin and Zeon. Good on three. Oh my. And now the pressure is on for Wisconsin. Match point. This is this is it. You heard the lady match point, and she means it very literally. As once this is done, you were we're going home, and that'll be all she wrote. DSU on the doorstep of cinching their first win here for the spring semester of CCL 2023. It's it's definitely not like in the bag yet. However, you have two players from Wisconsin who are buying light shields. Very scary situation for them, for sure. We see a lot of mid control, but it looks like yeah, Zeon's gonna get very one. good way of starting this. Good for one. Billy also getting super aggressive. He's gonna take down one. Oh, Billy. Billy, don't do this to me. Okay. <laughs> Oh my. Good for one. Definitely could have gone for a knife, but was probably being screamed at not to. I know Billy would have loved to do that. Billy's good for another. It's down just to legit. Just like Billy's gonna he flash has the looks skill, like... but not the health. Five HP and a dream. And with that, Farag oh, fan himself no. will be cinching up this first, this first round, I guess, for, was, for CCL. Yeah. yeah. And, but... That'll be it. DSU coming away with their first win of this first week of CCL this spring semester. And really, it was a great game. Oh, yeah. 100%. You know, and I was actually, I watched um, some of the teams play earlier before the CCL season started. And Billy was actually on Haven playing KO. <laughs> and he, he mentioned that... KO is actually such a great agent to play on Haven. It's basically Phoenix, but 
better, but better <laughs> in terms of the flashes and the information that you can receive from KO. It, it's just such a great ult as well, and it's it's just a, such a great agent. And I, I've watched him play, and he plays very well on retakes, especially um, in positioning like the flashes. I noticed that one flash he had thrown very high above C long, and that's that's honestly a very good flash. Because so. it's not going to necessarily like get you a whole lot of information, but. I mean, people are aiming down C long. That's like right at the top of their screen. Nobody can hear it either, and it's just going to pop. And it's very as hard soon to. As you it's swing. Very, yeah, no one can, will be able to hear it, but you might be able to see it. But it'll be almost too late because it should be popping by the time that it reaches the bottom of their screen. And it's a very hard flash to try to avoid. So, it it's honestly I mean, that's so what cool. you get for being rank one twenty in, in <laughs> honestly, the nation. Or in it, the but in my rank, region. you know, people just phoenix flash, and I'm pretty much dead because. I don't. I don't expect a phoenix flash every time, and they're so fast, in my opinion. And they're hard to they're hard to hear because he just flicks his fingers. And his I mean, flash. That, that's the strength of phoenix there, though. But yeah, nope. DSU will be running away with this round. GG's to Wisconsin Lacrosse. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of them. They looked great last semester. Don't get me wrong, but especially their first half on split, I'm seeing it was a very, lot. It was of honestly good pretty pretty scary in the first half of split. You know, it was five to seven. I believe. I, I think, yeah, it was a five, seven, half. And then, like, they started getting away with it, too, until DSU started getting uh, their rifles in. Yeah, it was it was honestly very scary. So, but we pulled we pulled through. So. <laughs> go, go Trojans, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> no, that will be all from myself and Colin tonight. Again, GG's to Wisconsin. And I wait if I was a smart caster, I would know who is, like, next week and all that. But next week it should be on Sunday. Uh, we'll be seeing more DSU Valorant here uh, for CCL, and I hope to see you all then. Thanks for coming out.